Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. If I asked you right now to please click on the like button on this video, would you do it? Maybe you would resist out of principle, because you're not going to do just whatever you're told for no reason, you little rebel, I like you. Or maybe you would do it, because I asked you nicely, and you think I'm pretty great. The fact that you have a choice is, many would argue, because you are a conscious being with free will. It seems simple, right? But some would say that your decision about whether or not to click the like button was predetermined, and you're merely following a script so deeply embedded in your subconscious that you don't even know it exists. In the critically acclaimed indie game The Stanley Parable, you control Stanley, a board office worker responsible for pushing buttons, who suddenly finds himself alone with no one to tell him which buttons to push. As Stanley leaves his office and approaches two doors, a charming British narrator informs you, the player, that Stanley walks through the door on the left. What you decide to do next is entirely up to you. Kind of. We'll get into that in a minute. For thousands of years, philosophers have argued over why we do the things we do. Are we making decisions of our own free will, or have our choices been determined for us in advance due to biology, psychology, and simple cause and effect? The Stanley Parable asks that question by subverting the trope known as the voice with an internet connection, seen in games like Bioshock, Halo, and honestly almost every game ever made. Get a new trope, you guys. The voice guides the player, providing objectives and helping us understand how we should feel about the situation we're in. They're micromanagers, and for some reason, we pay game companies for the privilege of letting them boss us around. The narrator in the Stanley Parable attempts to be that boss, but the player is free to ignore him whenever they choose. This irritates the narrator as he attempts to get things back on track. Go ahead and spend several minutes hiding in a broom closet and you'll see what I mean. Yeah, you... You stick it to the man, Stanley, that'll show him. So Stanley is free to do whatever he wants, right? If the narrator instructs him to walk down a corridor, he can simply turn around and find another way forward. Or if he's bored playing his own game, he can jump into Minecraft or Portal. When you begin playing the Stanley Parable, the possibilities seem limitless. And so, at first glance, it's easy to believe the Stanley Parable is about the triumph of free will over what's known as determinism, the notion that all events and human actions are predetermined by external causes. Determinism takes the basic idea of cause and effect and moves it to a whole new level. For instance, we know we can be predisposed towards certain medical conditions based on the genes we inherit from our parents. A determinist would say that we inherit so much more than that. Our thoughts and behaviors, they argue, are also informed by genetics, so much that it's sometimes referred to as puppet determinism, or the idea that we're controlled by the strings of our genes. The thought process goes like this. An organism behaves the way it does due to environment and biology. The environment is the stimulus, and biology provides the organism's ability to react. 19th century biologist Thomas Huxley said that humans are an extreme example of conscious automata. Our actions are a result of conditioning, even if we think we're making a spur-of-the-moment choice. For example, if I'm genetically predisposed to fits of rage when something doesn't go my way, my controllers are in for a beating whenever I play Dark Souls. There is some scientific backing to the theory that free will is merely a construct of the human mind, which always wants to feel in control. Researchers performed a study where people were shown five white circles and told to choose one without indicating to the researchers which they'd chosen. Then one of the circles would turn red, and the participants were asked to confirm if the circle they had chosen had been the one to change to red. Since the test was truly random, the results should have been around 20%. However, researchers saw results in excess of 30%. The idea is that our brains pull in so much information and process it so quickly that we misinterpret the order of events. We make a choice, or so we think, because we knew what consequence we wanted to see. However, it may be that we are conditioned to do the thing we did and retroactively justified it by convincing ourselves we meant to do that all along. The Stanley Parable, which seems to be about breaking free of a set path and doing what you want, is a game programmed by a human being. And because of that, you really can't do whatever you want. Everything you're able to do, every path you break away on, was predetermined by the creator. But in fact, the Stanley Parable does a good job of presenting a balanced view on the argument between free will and determinism. True, you can't do whatever you want. There are limitations to the game, just as there are limitations to our universe. I'll never be able to dunk like Kevin Durant, as one example. But within the bounds of the game, you can make a large number of meaningful choices. Karl Popper, a 20th century philosopher of science, believed in a middle ground between what he called the clocks of determinism and the clouds of free will. Everything is connected by biology, history, physics, like a complex machine, all influencing your actions and the actions of everyone. But we do have agency, so it's our responsibility to try and do the right thing. Sometimes that means listening to the narrator and not pressing the button that triggers a nuclear explosion. 
Hey, thanks for watching Play Noggin. If you want to learn more about the science behind your favorite video games like Minecraft or Portal, check out our other videos here. Be sure to click like and subscribe, and don't forget to keep on playing.